By 1701, the indigenous populations of New England have undergone a demographic catastrophe. The 150,000 who scholars estimate inhabited the region at the time of European contact has been radically reduced. It caused grief and sadness and a real change in life and thinking about how to adjust and kind of move through that time period. That kind of demographic disaster for indigenous peoples enables the expansion initially of Puritan settlements south of New England and eventually to the colonization of interior New England and much of Connecticut as well. And indigenous populations are forced into often servile or various forms of manual employment. They struggle, but they survive. For many indigenous populations, the arrival of Europeans into their worlds creates such devastating transformations that many seek alternative solutions to their deepening problems. Christianity becomes for many one avenue of potential salvation and or community survival. And so learning the English language, learning to write it as well, learning to preach the gospel, learning how to educate one's community members within these newly formed settlement societies are essential forms of survival for indigenous populations coping with the settlement of Europeans around them. I believe that indigenous people found resilience in their community. I think they found resilience in their youth. I think I found resilience in their grandparents and thinking about how as a tribal nation, how as an indigenous community, they can still thrive and move on and to ensure that there are future generations of indigenous people to follow. Very early on, the Puritans understand that they are in a religious struggle not just with the native peoples of the region, but also the landscape. They still maintained and developed religious institutions, missionization efforts, and related forms of settlement with, for native populations, but they also began forms of expansion that took them into other indigenous peoples' lands. Missionaries often have close relationships with indigenous either villagers and or often students who become part of praying towns or various kind of congregations close to Puritan settlements. And eventually, in the early 19th century, Yale trains dozens of missionaries who spread the gospel across not just North America, but also into the Pacific. So these relationships between Yale and other indigenous worlds are really important for understanding the larger legacies of subordination and enslavement that the institution is also practicing. So indigenous people were here stewarding the lands prior to Yale being built and thriving in community. And we as Yale, as we think about these lands that we reside on now, should really take time to reflect and think about the people that came before and worked here and to honor their legacies and their culture and to honor the living culture and legacies of the indigenous peoples today. Indigenous people are still here. We're still present, we're still relevant, we're still laughing. In spite of all that happened in history as we kind of look back, we're a thriving community and culture. <laughs>